This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, thousands of hospital workers take to the streets protesting to improve their pay and conditions. Otago's community hospice asks for help to support the growing demand for its services. And a large crowd turns out in Cromwell to farewell a complete stranger who died 150 years ago. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. 10,000 hospital workers took to the streets today around the country protesting to improve their pay and working conditions. The 24-hour strike comes after 18 months of failed negotiations, which has seen many elective surgeries delayed. Cars tooted and hospital workers cheered as they took to the cold and wet streets today in Christchurch. This group were among 10,000 Public Service Association members and allied health workers protesting to improve their pay and working conditions. Health workers have been negotiating with district health boards for the last year and a half, trying to agree on a new and improved collective agreement. Without us, you don't get an operation. And we are paid minimum wage. We deserve to be paid more for a life-preserving service, and the public deserves more. Ethia today calling for the government to step up. I'm hoping that Minister Little will listen to us today, I hope he will hear us today, and I hope he will step up and give us the pay and the fair treatment that we deserve. Raywin Love works as a hospital dental assistant and says she sees a steady stream of anxious and desperate patients coming through. She's been working in the specialised high-stress job for 16 years, but only earns $25.50 an hour. She claims she struggles to even afford regular dental treatments herself. It's really hard to survive at the moment with the cost of living going up, petrol and uh, food prices. And as a hospital dental assistant, I am one of the lowest paid allied health members. The Canterbury DHB warned the public that many of its services were impacted by today's strike, resulting in longer wait times for patients. In Christchurch, the South today. A car veered off the road before crashing this morning, ending up on its roof near Otago Harbour. Fire and Emergency New Zealand says the car slid off Portobello Road just after nine this morning, flipping onto its roof and landing on the rocks. A 22-year-old woman was the only person involved in the crash and was out of the car by the time crews arrived. She was treated at the scene by St John for minor injuries. The Otago Community Hospice has recently increased the number of staff to help meet the growing demand for its palliative care services. But there's been no increase in government funding, with the hospice appealing to the local community to help overcome the funding shortfall. The Otago Community Hospice recently boosted the palliative support it gives in residential aged care. Nurse practitioner Sally Fleming says staff numbers at the Dunedin facility have been increased to meet the demand from the local community. That includes a doubling of the residential aged care support service team. Uh, previously had two here in Dunedin um, covering from South Otago through to North Otago. And now we've doubled that and we've got four in, in the Dunedin region at the moment. Fleming says the overall boost in hospice staff will add an extra half a million dollars to the annual budget. However, they're not receiving any increase in government funding. Age residential care facilities are increasingly um, needed to provide palliative care and end-of-life care for increasing numbers of people in, in, in the region. And it's a really important part of people's lives. Um, and the, the, the organisations and the staff need support to, to take care of those people at that special time. This week is Hospice Awareness Week, which has the Otago Daily Times as a major supporter. The fundraiser is aiming to meet the shortfall with a goal of trying to raise more than $3 million from the community. Fleming admits the hospice struggles to find staff because health institutions such as public hospitals pay more. But she says she wouldn't work anywhere else. Oh, it's, a, it's an honour 
to look after people at this stage of their lives. Um, the workforce in aged residential care is an incredibly dedicated and hard working group of people and I really enjoy supporting them. I've worked caring for older people all my nursing career really um, and I just find it really satisfying. Hospice Awareness Week runs until Sunday. In Dunedin, the South today. Dunedin police are reminding people to pick swim spots carefully after a young man got into trouble in big swells on Sunday. The 18-year-old decided to go for a dip at Tunnel Beach while the friends watched from the shore. However, the man got into a bit of trouble scrambling onto the rocks where he was hit by big waves which pushed him back into the water. By the time police and search and rescue members arrived, the 18-year-old was out of the water. St John says the man needed medical attention and was transported to Dunedin Hospital by helicopter with minor injuries. Police say the incident served as a reminder to swim to your capability as well as between the flags or where there's surf lifesavers available. There's been a series of ram raids across the country recently with images of cars and utes smashing at speed into shop frontages. But in Christchurch early this morning, a couple of criminals took a much slower and less noisy approach. Two robbers carefully backed the ute into the front door of the Barker's convenience store in Hornby, failing to wake nearby residents. Locals say they didn't hear a thing at 5.30 this morning until they heard the news on breakfast and checked security camera footage. Police say inquiries are ongoing. About 300 people turned out in Cromwell on Saturday to farewell a complete stranger who died nearly one and a half centuries ago. Discovered during an archaeological dig some 40 years ago, the remains of an 1860s gold rush miner were finally laid to rest on Saturday. Set to be taken to his final resting place with a mode of transport he'd have been familiar with. The remains of an unknown gold miner were excavated from an unmarked grave in the Cromwell Gorge 40 years ago. On Saturday, they were finally buried in a proper cemetery after a grand procession through Cromwell's historic precinct. It's believed the unknown miner died during the gold boom of more than 140 years ago, when much of the area was relatively untamed. The gold miners uh, come to be a symbol of why central Otago was founded and settled back in the 1860s. The funeral was organised by Affinity Funerals, with funeral director Clark Campbell taking part in the procession. Uh, this gentleman may or may not have had a, a funeral or a formal send-off back then, but he's going to have one today, of which all New Zealanders should be entitled to a dignified ceremony and acknowledgement that they were on this earth. Campbell joined with many of the other 300 mourners in wearing an outfit as close to the period as possible, his clothes echoing his own family history. I have my grandfather's top hat, who is also a funeral director, and my great-grandfather's mourning jacket. Uh, he was obviously a small man because this is quite tight and I wouldn't consider myself large. Archaeologists served as pallbearers with the Reverend Barry Entwistle presiding over the service. In Cromwell, the South today. If I Yakane, still to come on the South today. The environment's planning to sp sorry, the government is planning to spend four point five billion dollars to reduce the country's emissions, and workmates from a Dunedin department store line up to lose their locks for a cancer charity. Age Concern Otago hosts a multitude of social activities, including indoor walks.
Oh, well, mate, I'm thinking about getting a new ute. My mate John's gone mad. Mad at beds, that is. Bedlam bed sale. One third of beds and bedroom. Only at John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street. And my mate John. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. <laughs> Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. Joy with Jazz, the next generation from Honda. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. Tanakwe, welcome back. The government has announced it's putting $4.5 billion into a new climate emergency response fund and plans to ban high-emitting vehicles. It wants more than a third of cars on New Zealand roads to be electric or hybrid by 2035, with half a billion dollars earmarked to help low-income families switch their vehicles. Climate Change Minister James Shaw also announced a range of other measures around reducing emissions in public transport and agriculture. From 2025, only zero emission buses will enter the fleet. And by 2035, the entire public transport fleet will be decarbonised. Low emissions trucks will carry food and goods and cut freight emissions by 35% by 2035, and farmers and growers will be supported to reduce emissions with proven practices, tools and technology, and our native wildlife and forests will be restored and protected. Pupils at Dunedin's Arthur Street School are making do after half of their school was recently demolished. Pupils were able to watch as their main hall, two classrooms and the principal's office were reduced to rubble and dust at the hands of heavy machinery. The demolition is the first stage of a more than $10 million redevelopment. Arthur Street is Dunedin's oldest school. It was established on the current site near the central city in 1877. Amateur sand sculptors hit Tomahawk Beach recently for a beach cleanup and sandcastle building contest. It was more than just a fun activity, with the event aimed at raising awareness of sustainable beach usage. We are building sandcastles. It's a sandcastle competition for the sustainability office for Otago Uni. We are making a mermaid using seaweed for the hair. I don't know, we didn't really have a plan, so we kind of just thought of it on the spot, but it actually turned out pretty well. One of my flatmates, she's in the sustainability group, so she's kind of taught us heaps of stuff around that Otago's offering. I feel like before it wasn't really talked about, but now it is. And so we've kind of been more introduced to it, which is pretty cool. A group of workers from Dunedin's Farmers Department Store lined up at the weekend to lose all their hair. Shave for a Cure is an annual fundraiser for the store, with staff blown away by the generosity of their customers. 
a bit more than a trim. Volunteers got a very close cut from hairdresser Haley Gray on Saturday at the annual Shave for a Cure event at Dunedin's Farmer's Store. It's a fundraiser for the Leukaemia and Blood Cancer Charity, which Regional Manager Deborah Tomlin says is vital to keep the organisation running. Leukaemia and Blood Cancer New Zealand receives no government funding and everything that we provide is funded for by donated dollars. So it's very important to us to continue to support the eight people a day in New Zealand that are diagnosed with the blood cancer and we can help support them and their families through the journey. Many of those volunteering to lose all their hair had close ties to people who've battled cancer. Um, you know, I've had friends who have family members affected by leukaemia. Um, you know, I have colleagues who have family members that have been affected by leukaemia. So this is something that's quite dear to me as well. Um, and yeah, I've just I've been absolutely blown away. Just really touched. Thank you very much. Farmers staff helped collect donations in store over the day, raising more than six thousand dollars from the event. I have been blown away by how generous people have been and how supportive people have been. It's really touching. It has been a really rough time for a lot of people, and working with these charitable organisations is just so important. Dunedin's Shave for a Cure was just one of many held across the country, with more than six hundred thousand dollars being raised over the weekend. In Dunedin, the South today. FI Yakane, after the break on the South today, the Otago Nuggets flip the game to beat the Hawks in Dunedin, and we'll take a look at the weather. Drop, drop, drop when you. John's gone mad. Mad at beds, that is. And there's definitely some method to his madness. Bedlam bed sale. This weekend only, John's taken an utterly insane one-third off all beds and bedroom. That's 33% off Dunedin's lowest priced beds and bedroom furniture. Bedlam bed sale. One-third off beds and bedroom. Only at John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street. Get that furniture from Stafford Street. And my mate John... In every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now.
Tanakwe, welcome back. A foul against Hawke's Bay Hawks star Hiram Harris flipped the game in favour of the Otago Nuggets in the NBL clash over the weekend. The Nuggets struggled to keep pace with the Hawks for the first half of the game at the Edgar Centre on Saturday night. The Hawks had just come off a solid win over the Southland Sharks in Invercargill. But after Otago import Todd Withers was fouled at the hoop by Hiram Harris, the momentum of the game changed. The Nuggets seized control, led by Keith Williams and Sam Timmons, riding a 14-0 run to finish the third quarter. Otago then restricted the visitors to just 11 points in the final quarter to emerge the victors, 94 points to 80, in front of a passionate home crowd. Their next home game is against the Franklin Bulls this Friday. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Thousands of hospital workers have taken to the streets across the country as part of a 24-hour strike protesting their pay and conditions. This is Hospice Awareness Week and the Otago Community Hospice is asking for the public's help to support the growing demand for its palliative care services. And a large crowd turns out in Cromwell to farewell a complete stranger who died almost 150 years ago while working in the gold mines of central Otago. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome the Deputy Editor, Craig Page. Kia ora, good evening Craig. Good evening. Um, government today of course unveiling its, its plans to reduce the country's emissions, um, a lofty target of zero emissions by 2050. Um, pouring $4.5 billion into it, so a lot of money to mm. be involved um, and a big focus on transport obviously to yes. get those gas guzzling vehicles off the road in favour of EVs. Um, I think $500 million has gone into the transport area. They're going to launch a trial for low to middle income families where they can um, perhaps get rid of their vehicles in exchange for hybrids so um, mm -hmm. that's great news and an entire bus fleet as well is, is to be zero emissions by 2035 so some big changes ahead um, yeah. we've spoken to some local people who, who don't actually think the government's gone far enough they think they could have done better so okay. interesting so you lots of debate on that and oh, plenty of reading to, yeah reading yeah. if you pull that apart that'd yeah. be great a um, bit of excitement in Queenstown uh, confirmation Qantas is going to have its first trans-Tasman flight out of uh, Queenstown on Monday Oh wow! Um, first flight, uh, international flight in 330 days for Queenstown. So, yeah, it does seem a long time, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, does. And the good news is, from next month, Jetstar and Air New Zealand are also going to pick up the pace as well with their Trans Tasman flights. So, almost back to normal, whatever mm. that was. <laughs> Can we um, remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And a, a sports story: the the findings of an independent inquiry into cycling New Zealand high performance sport um, was unveiled today, and of course that's was launched in the, in the wake of the tragic death of um, suspected suicide of cyclist Olivia Podmore in August last year, so yeah. it was really horrific. Um, the report doesn't make pretty reading to be fair, um, cycling and high performance sport in general have, have taken a bit of a battering. Um, culture of medals without process apparently, a lack of transparency and accountability, right. um, particularly around selection and an environment where gender biases were quite prevalent as well. So um, yeah, there's going to be lots of discussion over coming days about that and hopefully yeah. they can actually get something out of it and improve. Absolutely. Everything. Yeah, that's a good end goal, right? Exactly. Craig, thank you for sharing this evening. Thank you. And now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Looking at the situation, a week of westerly airflow lies ahead with milder temperatures at first and much colder southwesterly air arrives late in the week with possible snow flurries inland. Heading to the top of the South Island first, Nelson will be showery with light winds and 18 degrees tomorrow. Greymouth is in for heavy rain and 17, while Christchurch looks warm with a high of 21, but still a few evening showers to watch out for. To our southern towns now, the Catlins, Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore are all heading for 15 degrees tomorrow with fresh northwesterlies and some rain. Travelling westwards to the Central Lakes area, Wanaka, Queenstown and Alexandra will all reach 16 with nor'westerlies and showers, and much the same over in Tiano with heavier rain and 14 degrees. To the northern towns next, Timaru and Awamaru will get high cloud, northerlies and afternoon showers, 
Warm to the north with 21, while Awamaru gets 18. And that number's matched over in Twizel and Omarama, where it'll be showery with nor'westerlies. Down to Dunedin, fine, dropping down to 9 degrees overnight. Tuesday starts cloudy and dry before afternoon rain and northerlies, as you'd expect at this time of the year, up to 15 and down to 11 degrees. Midweek looks sunny with high cloud and nor'westerlies. Expect a high of 19 and a low of 11. And now to Invercargill. Cloudy tonight with westerlies dropping down to 9. Tomorrow there will be showers turning to rain with fresh gusty westerlies reaching 14 before dropping down to 10. And Wednesday should be cloudy with more showers and strong westerlies up to 14 degrees and dropping down to 11 as the low. That's the news this Monday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. Nō reira, kia pai te po, ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.